Now on to the most important topic, in my opinion, the transition. This is the key, this is what sets us up to make a good quality golf swing. Now before we talk about the transition in a golf swing, I just wanted to talk about a tr transition in athletics in general. So in a throwing motion, when I go to throw, I land square with my arm still back. Whether I'm throwing sidearm or over the top. I'm gonna land with my body relatively square, my shoulders maybe a hair closed, and my arm back. Now in a tennis motion, so as tennis ball's coming, you kind of walk in, you get yourself squared up. So you land, your knees are gonna be relatively square, the, the racket's back, your body's back. So then you can hit that forehand and you can use the ground to push yourself around. And the same thing holds true in a baseball swing. So. I'm getting ready to hit the pitch. Here it comes. I take a step. When I land, I land with my legs square, so my hips are square. My shoulders are maybe slightly closed and my hands are back. My hands aren't coming forward as I'm re-squaring. So I'm square, hands back. Now that's a common thing among other sports. You've got to land. Before you launch the club, you're squared back up, so you're not firing your hips early. You're landing square. Okay, so now that's the key for our transition in golf as well. We've got to figure out how to get ourselves re-squared out of the top. So you're not getting to the top of your backswing and firing your hips open. You're getting to the top, you're loading down, re-squaring, and from there you can use the ground to open your hips up. <clears throat> now let's talk about how we get, a, get to that. So first thing we need to understand is that our actual transition from backswing to downswing starts in the backswing. It does not start from the top down. So if you watch as I, as I start this club away, one of the things we talked about last time was as I take it away, my right hip goes back until it has to start going around. Well, once my right hip starts moving around and toward the target, that's the beginning of my transition to the forward swing. So as I'm starting to reach the top of my backswing, my right hip is, is beginning to work around and forward toward the target. And once I've got it as far forward as it's gonna go in the backswing, that's about as far forward as it's gonna go in the transition. In transition, there's not gonna be a lot of sliding forward. It's gonna be more of a, it's gonna hold itself there as the left side starts to come back and re-square. So my, I'm not taking and pushing early. Now this is a point of controversy amongst other golf instructors out there, a couple of the golf instructors I really like, but they, they tend to battle each other and say that, you know, there's a lot of slide in the downswing. Well, I wanna show you what, how this actually works, and they're both right. It's just what they're seeing is different things. Okay, so when you take the club back, as my right hip works back and around, now, it's about as far forward as it's gonna go in the re-squaring phase, but if all I do is let my left hip now come back and meet it, that looks like my hips have moved laterally. And they have, they've moved laterally as far as my right hip went toward the target. So about two inches, my right hip went toward the target about two inches. Now as I start down, my right hip stays that two inches and my left hip comes back. So now let's talk about what the arms do as we transition. This is another point of contention among golf instructors. I hear a lot of golf instructors talk about how you want to have a, a dropping of the arms first. And other instructors say that you need to leave your arms up. Now I would say that they're both right in some ways. What's actually happening is if you look at the upper part of my arms, they're staying up, but my right arm is actually going to lose a little bit of flex in transition, so it's going to widen out my arc. So if I do that, that's basically all my arm needs to do to get me down to impact. So as we're transitioning, as my legs are, are re-squaring, my arms are actually widening. So I'm pushing my right arm back and away. So that motion all by itself would look something like this. So my arms are working back and behind me. That's also shallowing that golf club out. But if I blend that with the motion of my body turning, you can see that that's a wonderful looking motion. 
So now I'm re-squared, and I'm in position to really hit this ball. So both are right. I'm extending my arm, and my right elbow is just staying, kind of keeping up with me. It makes it look like my arm gets into a, this pitching motion because it's extending back behind me as my body is rotating forward. As I reach the top of my backswing, I could have the club in a lot of different positions. I could have it across, I could have it on plane, or I could have it laid off. Now, this is where it's really important to have a good transition. If I've got the club out of position, and I have a good transition, the club will get put into the right place by the forces of physics. So here are two examples of this principle. On the left, we have Jerry Kelly, who tends to get the club up into a laid off position. On the right, we have Matthew Wolf, who tends to get it quite across the line. Now you'll see as they transition, you'll see in the case of Jerry Kelly, as he begins to unwind and he has those tension free arms, his club's going to gradually steepen from that laid off position and get where it's swinging more or less 90 degrees to his spine and right around his rotation. And the same holds true for Matthew over here. As, as he starts to unwind the golf club or unwind his body and re-squares, the torque that's put on the club tends to make that club lay down and get in line with his rotation again. With a good pivot, we can get away with a lot of different positions at the top of our backswing. So if I can keep the, the tension low in my hands and start to move correctly, that correct transition will slot the club so that I can get away with some of the goofy things I did earlier. Now let's talk about how that works. <laughs> so if I swing this club up and I've got it across the line, but it, I have very low tension, as I begin to re-square and my body starts to put torque on this shaft, the center of mass of the golf club is going to want to line up with that direction of the, so it's going to want to get in line with the direction the path of, of my hands are, are being taken in. Okay? Now the same thing holds true here. If I take this club back and I've got it laid off and I don't have a lot of tension, as I begin to, to tra transition down, that club's going to get slotted so I can get away with quite a bit as long as I'm not tense and pulling with my hands out of the top. So the key is low tension. Now we're letting ourselves sit down and re-square. That's the key to your transition. So low tension, we're sitting down and re-squaring and getting that golf club into the slot. Now from there, now it's time to launch it and really 